Are you guys ready for the best nights of our lives? Yep. Smile so enthusiastic. Are you ready for the best night of your life, Sunny? Yeah. All right. See, that's the that's the spirit. That's the spirit we need, okay? Sorry. Are you... I'm still waking up. Still. It's not it's like wait. It's not that it's I I wait. Bro. <laughs> what? You gotta fix your sleep schedule. Trust me, I've been trying. <laughs> Okay. We gotta, we gotta, okay, this is gonna, we're gonna play so many fun games, and we're gonna tell stories, and we're gonna, uh, what else do you do at sleepovers? I actually don't know. What do you mean you don't? Have you never had a sleepover before? Nope. Sunny, have you had a sleepover before? No? You guys never had a sleepover? I, well, I guess, hmm. <laughs> Is it? Is this like a? Is this like a anime thing? Do anime just not have sleepovers? Nah, I wouldn't call my situation <laughs> an anime thing. No. Well then, we. I guess we just gotta make sure this sleepover is the best sleepover ever. Nah, Where did I, you go? Oh, okay. You. <laughs> How? You have people. <laughs> what? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Nah, just seeing you excited is just great to see. And actually, it's actually a good thing to see. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna- we're gonna tell stories, we're gonna play games. What kind of games could we play? Hmm. <gasps> we can play- oh wait, Uno doesn't exist here. I- we gotta make Uno! Yo, we could invent Uno! <gasps> chat, Uno? I'm a genius, chat! <laughs> Elaborate? Basic- I don't know how to explain Ulo, Uno, actually. Um, it's like a card game. And you're, the, the goal is to get oh. down to no cards. Or I actually, the goal is to have as many cards as humanly possible, and then... Uh, yeah. What do I think that's a complete lie? Uh, <laughs> we could- we could also play- we could also make up- We could- I can teach you guys Monopoly? <gasps> we can live out our capitalist dreams. What? Okay, you... okay. Um, nah, you wouldn't hear that to fuck me up, okay? <laughs> Why? Why? Because it would be fun and festive, and that's what you do. At... Oh, a friend! Hello! Howdy! Hello! What's up? We were talking about what to do at the sleepover. Yeah. Hey, Dan. We're gonna I play games I... like Uno and Monopoly. Do they... Do they even... No, have... but we're gonna teach them. I don't think we should teach them Monop Monopoly, at the least. But... I think you should save them from that terrible game. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> it, uh, do you want to ruin relationships in REM? I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, nah, but genuinely, Marsh, I am excited. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be the I best am... day, the best night. I don't know. We're not gonna sleep, are we? Yeah, you're not supposed to sleep at sleepovers. I mean, I'm I'm going to sleep. I'm probably gonna clock out. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely going to sleep. I'm I'm an old man, dude. I can't- I can't do anything else. You're an old man. It's okay. I- I'm old, probably gonna run out of energy. Ripe age of 23. Yo! Wait, you're 23? I'm 23 years old, yes. I have too much energy. I need to, like, at... get rid of it. You look younger. Oh, thank you. That is either both concerning or good. I'm not quite sure. Take it as a compliment. Take it as a compliment. Okay. I'll do that. <laughs> Where is Swan and who was she bringing? Was she bringing Kitty. someone? Yeah, where are I they? Kitty. I think, I mean, honestly, they could have been caught up with Strahd. You, you saw Strahd, right? He was the guy with the pinkish red hair, right? Yeah, um, 
kind of like a little bit snippy. Yeah. Bourgeoisie kind of deal. Yeah, that guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, him. <laughs> so he has the same you... color hair as your shirt. I think a little darker though. My I... my shirt is like a wine color. It is magenta. Okay. I think color connoisseur. My... A hundred percent. If you can't tell the differences between certain colors in like plant life, you are literally like, <gasps> friends. Begging... No. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. Are you we ready Sorry, for the best fun. night of our lives? Yeah. <laughs> apparently, Kitty has assured me that um, I apparently have not had correct sleepovers. Um, because I it's called okay, sleepovers. Okay, neither of them. They have never had a sleepover in their oh. lives. They wanted um, Marshall wanted to play Monopoly, and I yeah, that's what you do in sleepovers. We can't play. Uh, we can't play Mario yeah, Party like, because like, they don't how, have like technology. Yeah, how do we? How do we? How do we? How do we we have to like make everything by hand. That's okay. Yeah, we'll kidding. figure it out. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Marshall who Phil mentioned Uno. Uno. Yeah, Uno's a little Uno, more Uno's a good one. Uno would probably be. Easier. We actually yeah. could do it with a normal deck of cards. Maybe we yeah. need like six deck, decks yeah, of no, cards. Yeah, so. we could totally okay. do it in a, like a normal. Also, Marshall said for for it had as many cards as possible, which I'm guessing is a lie. Nah, nah. That's totally how you play. For I sure. can teach Kitty how to gamble. What? That would be okay, fun. you've already done enough. Do not do no, Wait. Kitty, please, Kitty, please. Wait. Catherine Wait. will kill me. Listen, I don't. How how am I supposed to like look Catherine in the eye Wait. if you succumb to gambling? You can't, so, don't do this to me. Don't, I, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. I am your friend. No. Hey, hey. Uh, and how exactly are you going to keep Catherine from knowing she has a nose like a hound? She figures everything out. Turn around. What? Think. <laughs> Think about that one. What? Hound. Oh, wait, is that offensive? Did I see something that- oh, Is shit. it offensive? Nope. Wait, no. is it offensive? <laughs> I'm so sorry! I didn't- I, No, it isn't. <laughs> Thing is, I'm not offensive. See it? I mean, I called Amir a big fish when I met him and then immediately <laughs> regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> Not nah, nah, genuinely. No other I, I'm messing with you. Here. Wait, what? Wait, what's an Andanian? Andanian? That's what I. That's what he said it that he was, right? <laughs> is it not? Wait, he's not an animan, or is that just like a sub a subclass of animan or something? Fishman. I don't. I. I probably need to hit the books more often. Catherine yeah, would be me disappointed. Too, honestly, in... I can't believe um... I know a little bit more than you, considering I know nothing. I've I've gone through the entire library and still know nothing. Oh, I went well, to the library like yeah. once and then okay, never that's went back. Kind of concerning. <laughs> okay, to I'm be not, fair, I only to lie. It's it's for research. It's it's for research purposes. Catherine tutors me in a lot of things, and most of the time, I'm too exhausted by the end of the day to do anything else. It's getting <laughs> a little bit dark out. Okay, um, sleepover. Oh, we okay, a, so that means location. sleepover time is coming. Okay. Marcy, um, you said you knew a place, right? Ah, uh, yeah, we can you try to hide from Don't oh, worry. Where are we? Hold on, I, I turned myself oh, around. That's fine. I'm glad. I, I really I really didn't know. I will be oh. lightly okay. messing with you. Okay, okay. Um, hmm. The hype house? The hype house. It's the, the hype most hype place it. for sleepovers. What? I don't know why isn't, she called it that. Isn't... That's where the squad is, bro. The it's squad. the hype house. Have I we're gonna, met, it's like, gonna be so high. Wait, are, Welcome it, it, to the hype like, house. If we stay in the hype house for like a night, does that mean we're, we're like honorary hype house members? Uh, sure. <gasps> okay, wait, how many of it? Looks like, I mean, mm. yeah, it looks fine. Are, are you? I should. Don't you live here? I shouldn't. I think wait. I should knock. Um. But, um. But wait. <laughs> okay then. Approaching the house, Kitty is still talking enthusiastically about the sleepover, recounting the many nights in which she'd stay up late with the crew of Nevermore playing games, getting into mischief, and telling stories. She was a little skeptical about the normal version, most teens their age experience, but the allure of games, junk food, and late night was motivation enough. Swan can't help but smile. After all, Kitty's excitement is infectious. Marshy comes to a stop in the front, uh, in front of the door, and she hesitates for a moment. 
Her tail swishes from side to side as she thinks, before balling her fist and knocking against the wood. Dan cocks an eyebrow at this. Can't you just... walk in? Marshy's ears flex a little as she glances back. She smiles brightly before shrugging at the human. I mean, yeah, I guess, but I, I, with this large group, I, I, it would probably be more polite to knock, you know, so we don't accidentally scare anyone. That is fair. Going to a house with unannounced guests could be overwhelming to the inhabitants that live there. So instead of questioning it further, Dan shrugs and lets it go. If you say so. It takes a few more knocks and a minute of waiting until the door finally opens. While you're expecting someone to open the door, you certainly weren't expecting to see Ravi. Dan and Swan, you've only interacted with him a handful of times. However, from the experience, you could at least gauge that he wasn't the most peopley of people in Rem. Nonetheless, Marshy's tail begins to wag slightly upon seeing her friend. Why are you knocking? You live here. Ravi immediately states bluntly before going to rub at his eyes. Was he taking a nap before he answered? Before he answered, you decided to not dwell on it and get straight to the point. Well, I mean, I thought I would be a little better to do to knock since I have friends. You step to the side and gesture towards the large group behind you. Ravi's face twists in a displeased expression. You find yourself rocking yourself back and forth on your heels as you wait eagerly for his response. He continues to stare at your group for a moment, processing, processing before turning to you. You're not inviting more people into this house. Not to live here! We just want to have a sleepover! Ravi hesitates before sighing. <sighs> Marshy, there's no room for- But- Marshy, you attempt to try to re reason with him. After all, while the house you live is a little cramped, having people over for one night shouldn't be too bad. How however, it appears that you and- It appears to you that Ravi disagrees. No buts. The house is too small for this many people. Find another place. He says plainly, before moving to shut the door. You attempt to catch the handle, hoping that you can try to keep the door open and attempt to convince him. But, to no avail, it shuts despite your protest. You hear the lock latch from behind the wooden door, and you blink as you realize you're not now locked out. <sighs> okay, well I guess we'll try somewhere else. Oh. You can't oh, lock me out of my own house! All right, let's get well, out of here. I think they, they just did. Yeah, I'm um, I, I don't really have a place I can offer. Uh, I don't think one they'd let me bring any uh, outsiders into the barracks. I already have to pay to let Kitty stay there from my own salary. Um, no, that's not gonna work, Kitty. They're, they kill me. Also, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't like a, an actual criminal in the barracks. Ooh, yeah. Me, yeah. Well, well I have. Well, I have a, well. Still have a record. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure some of the other guards probably do too. I mean, like, there's reform, surely. I mean, I don't know that many of them personally. I kind of keep to myself. I really only know, like, Marianne and Catherine and Strahd and, like, some of the others on my squad. But that's fine. Um, and it basically, uh, y'all probably wouldn't fit in my room anyway. It's literally, like, maybe two people. I live with Remy, but, I mean, if you didn't come with for rooms, then the place is actually pretty cramped as it is. I could try, but I don't, I, he doesn't like being around a <sighs> lot of people, and I think it being too cramped would be an issue. Well, okay, uh... Oh, shoot. Why didn't we figure this out before? Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah, no. Camping. Huh? Blossom, camping? That's a great oh. idea. Oh! <gasps> I guess camping I wanna go camping? That would be so yeah. fun! Wait, where do we camp? I, there's the big forest out somewhere that way. I know. Or we can actually. I feel like going outside of the city would be bad. But there is, there's a like a forest that way. Now there, there's actually like a no, little. No, we're not forest. going outside of, of the city. No, um, Remy actually had like a little area where he like camped out when we first met. So I think there maybe there's a little there's so there is like a little covering if you're concerned about like debris or rain or something he has like a little desk area oh okay so i mean i'm yeah. more concerned about bugs murdering me but you know it's fine no, well I, if you I, have I this point i've experienced worse yeah no i, oh, I don't I, I don't think i don't think bugs you have to worry about we when i was sleeping up there it wasn't sticks. it wasn't it wasn't bugs that i was worried about 
Uh, are the crows gonna follow us? I don't think the crows. Look, I'm gonna find. I think the crows the best... are actually chilling with Remy tonight. I'm gonna find good sticks and get a sword fight. Okay. But they might be there. I don't know. They could be there. I actually don't know. I have it. The crows I hope we really get there that before it gets super dark. It's already getting a little dark. It should Ooh. be fine. No, no, we we should be completely okay. If I, I remember correctly, it should be over this way. It's a little bit of a walk, but it's a nice walk. We don't have to rent out camping sites, do we? Because I think it might be a little too late to do that. Uh, I mean, I slept on the sand and it was fine. Oh, we can have a beach camp. Yeah. Hmm. Is camping on the beach like? Well, I guess it would be different, but just you can hear bit. the waves all nearby. night. And then the high tide if, comes like, in and drowns is... you in your sleep. Oh, um, that's <laughs> not me. Hold on, just had an actual concern that I have to have because uh, like, no, I know no, the tides, no. you know, are a thing. But oh uh, wait, oh, oh, no. No. you led us astray. I didn't leave you astray. I didn't know where the pathway ended. There is, in fact, a bridge over here, though. <gasps> a bridge. Can we just, like, stay on the main road? I mean, yeah. Actually, no, that probably would be a better idea, huh? Because I was able to walk all the way from one, one side of the city to the other, just staying on the main road. I don't know. Would it be... Would it be there? I mean, we could we can save that story for later. I think that might be a good story to tell. We could sing campfire songs! <gasps> I don't know any off the top of my head, but I got really excited and then kind of sad because I don't like remember. I only any. know the SpongeBob one. There's a SpongeBob. Let's gather around nine, the campfire. Nine, and fire and and we gotta save it. We gotta save it. We gotta save it. Okay. I mean, blood can stain blossoms. What? Is it? Oh no! Sorry. I'm okay, I'm sorry. Who <gasps> did not know that blood could stain? I'm sorry. Have you ever like existed I'm not concerned ever? Concerned about that? Have I'm more never, concerned about the context. Have you never had blood outside of your body once in your life? I'm sorry, if you manage that, honestly, I I don't I won't bow to you because that's strange, but Scary Stories is great. I'm yeah, they know it. my blossom knows that blood can stain. They were just wondering if it could evaporate. Oh, that's actually an interesting thing, can uh. it? Because I mean like part of it's kind of like I mean it's kind of a liquid, but I mean a kind of sludge would probably be left behind, I think, because some of it's that's a Marcy does not well, I mean, when exposed to air, it also kind of like solidifies. <gasps> Wait, you know? can we make a wish in the fountain? Does anyone have any coins? Um, I, 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 I listen. I left my wallet at home. Well, we'll do it later. I'm Wait, sorry. No. I, have, I'm... I have a small pumpkin. I don't think a small pumpkin's gonna cut it. I, I don't think know. it counts. Well, it's gonna get make the water all nasty. No. All right. Well, I hope your wish comes true. I guess. <laughs> Wait, what did you wish for? You can't oh, wait, say. Can you not... Damn. It won't come true if you say. Uh, I'm curious. Fine. So, is it back? Yeah, no, it's definitely back this way. Because there was like this weird turn. I don't know, Remy, when mm. I first met Remy, we kind of walked this way. But then at the same time, we kind of ran into some farm, like some fields and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I, he's lived here longer than I did, but, uh, than I have. But the I, city I is think huge. He, he still doesn't know. Yeah, he, I don't think he knows how to navigate. I mean, if things go wrong, we can always go sleep in the mines. That'd be fun. Wait, what? <laughs> that doesn't sound that, like a lot of fun. I mean, maybe. <laughs> it might be illegal. Are, are the. Are the uh, 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 Caves tend to be pretty good ecosystems. They tend to stay quite like pretty much the same all year round. So yeah, yeah. No, but if they're set aside for mining not and mine we stat? do activities okay. that are not mining without a license of some kind, I feel like that's maybe a little illegal. Nah, not if we're sleeping. Explosives. Hey, we had explosives in. We had explosives in in the mines. It was fun. You had explosives. <sighs> yeah. Interesting. That's not reassuring. I got to throw dynamite at a giant. I think it was a slime. 
Again, so that's <laughs> not reassuring. I haven't really fought anything other than like boars and stuff. That was and like, then one guy. And that was like when I first got to Arrow and two, like two days after I and came bang. here. Actually nuts. I dealt with like a, a petty crime case or two. I've, I've had to break apart of uh, some fights. Blood can leave um, behind crystals. Interesting. Huh? Blood can leave behind crystals. That is a very Ooh, interesting. Ooh, so you fact. can make jewelry that's out of blood. Crazy. I don't think you should. Oh. I think we should stop with that thought. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then we walked through this I always like this side of the city. It's just so far away. Never been able to come over here. It is quite pretty. I mean, I think... Yeah, no, I haven't been back here since I first got to Erwin. Just look at this! Look how pretty that little river is! It is quite oh. pretty. Okay. Is there any, like, sea- not sea life. God, imagine. I, I think how you've been around uh, the docks there... too much! Does it I have connect been around to the, the docks. To the I've, ocean? Been working way, I've been working way too hard with Amir. She talks about only two things, Strahd and Sea Critters. It's actually kind of... both interesting, but a little bit repetitive. I mean, have have you ever had the unpleasant experience of witnessing Strahd drunk? Because I got to see that a few nights ago. You got to witness huh? little, like, little, like... <laughs> okay, remember back when, like, you know, that oh, the whole oasis? Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah, so yeah. that night when I went home, you know, Strahd was kind of, you know, gone, and Marianne didn't want to look for him. She normally does. So I decided to do it because I was worried because he was kind of being a jerk earlier that day, so I feared something was up, so I went and I looked, and yeah, he was drunk at Amir's bar. Awesome. Uh... I mean, he apologized, but I was, it was really awkward. Believe... Wow, I can't believe a nobleman would get drunk. I... 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 Grapes? I Sorry. Did I get mad if I stole a grape? Probably. Probably. Oh, man. Probably. They look so yummy. Probably 100%. I think it was down this way, actually. I knew we had to cross over into, like, some farmland. I know I jumped over a fence at some point. What? Just to get to the spot. Mercy, you have to you have to take off the, um... Well, you, have to take, you have to take the road less traveled by. <gasps> Wait, but That's typically so true. fences mean you should stay out. And like it's someone's property and oh, they're like fencing it off. Never mind. Whoops. Um, sorry, guys. Okay, I don't. I, <laughs> Make it just swim across. Yeah. Swimming is great and all, but I'd rather you know not, you know, so quite close. This is the field where you met the fixer. Yeah, that's where I met the fixer. What? <laughs> there's a there's, like a, a there's another there's another dude, like kind of like us. Um, they, oh? he, his name is Rex, and he calls himself the Fixer because he apparently fixes things. Sounds like a little bit of a nerd. Oh. I can't say anything. <laughs> I have a plant for a son. How's your, how's your, how's your son doing? Oh yeah, how's Pluto? Pluto's Their name is Pluto. Good. Hey! Yeah, Wait, well, um, you didn't call them Lodi? Yeah, I thought we, Lodi we, was cute. We discussed the name while you abandoned us. I know it was for a good reason, but like, I, it's still like a weird to think about that place, okay? Yeah. It, it's, it's really weird. It's gonna haunt us for the next like week at least. Oh, for <laughs> my life. Yeah, that's that was a whole entire life. I don't know if that's gonna go away for yeah. a while. Um, decided on the name Pluto because, I mean, it's a little. Little like a little Pluto, a little I, guy. I guess. A little guy. Pluto is also a little guy. I can't believe he's not a planet anymore. SMH. That was so mean. It's a dwarf planet. Absolute that makes it disrespect. So much better. I bet if I talked to Remy about like dwarf planets and stuff, he would lose his mind. He does a lot of like astronomy and stuff at he's college. He's a little nerd. Wait, do you think like do you, do you do, do, does Rent have their own solar system? Do you think? Maybe. Probably. I don't. <sighs> That's not a thing I want to think about right now, though. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going. Not. It's okay. I think it's actually. Hold on, we're going off the tra trail. <gasps> oh okay. Boy, oh boy. I'm gonna trust that this is not at all illegal. We're just walking in the grass. What's not legal about it? Well, what if this is someone's property and it's private and we're not There's allowed no to be keeping here? Keeping us out. Did you well, see a no trespassing sign? We just bypassed it a little bit ago. Yeah, 
Pluto is a very silly flower. Pluto likes the moon. Pluto likes chocolates and paper with words on Can them. it there eat? There it is. Yeah, no, it absorbs things. <laughs> they absorb things. I, I don't know how else to describe it. There Where we are. The... Oh! Oh, this is the little camp? Yeah. Oh. I'm actually surprised there's not that many crows what is like the here. What is the note? I think it's just a piece of paper that he left behind. Oh. Maybe Pluto will like it then. Maybe. Oh. Nope, Marshy ate it. Oh, I ate it? It does yeah. not- Marshy, yeah. that was for Pluto! There you go. Maybe... Do you... I can't. Okay, yeah, maybe... They're, they're not hungry right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> Keep it as a snack. Yeah, but, you know, but you, you look, Swan, the, civilization is nearby, so it's it's completely okay. We're, we're, okay. we're fine. It's fine. Um, they... We do need to... It looks like a fireplace burning. <gasps> we are beach here. camping! We got the waves! Look how I'm pretty! Go... And the sunset! Oh my gosh! You, got, you guys stay here. I'll be right back. I need to get some wood for the campfire. <gasps> Wait, hold on. Wait, we can go guys, for a midnight mean, swim. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but I just realized I forgot to turn my shaders back on. Bro. Where's some... <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, I'll just suffer without them. I'm so stupid. Got some sticks here. Uh, do you need oh, help wait. getting stuff? What? No, I think I'm fine. Um, I actually just got some kindling right here. So, actually, have you guys ever started a fire? Uh, uh no! Well, better late than never. Oh. Let me just try to start setting it up kind of in a... Okay, fire time! Dan announces, suddenly pouring a pile of dried sticks and dry grass in front of the two of you. Swan and Marshy, you glance in, in between each other as he leans down and begins to organize the sticks. Well, if you can call it organizing. It was more like he was trying to keep them in a small pile. He is then seen surrounding the pile with some rocks nearby. After a minute, and once he is satisfied with his pile, he moves to grab four sticks from the pile. He handed two, two to each of you, which causes some confusion. Um, Dan, I'm gonna need some instruction here. Since you guys have never been camping, I wanted to, want you to try and start a fire the old-fashioned way. Dan quickly explains. Try to ignite the pile with these two sticks you have. I'll be right back with some small logs once you get started. Before the two of you could ask any other questions, Dan wanders back into the tree line of the forest nearby. You both are now left with the two sticks and a pile. Uh. Uh. Okay. Oh, Marshy. I've heard of it. I've heard of it. We're... Okay. <laughs> sticks! You attempt to rub the sticks together, however, your speed is lacking. You find yourself quite literally rubbing the bark off the sticks. After a few moments of trying, you look at it, one another. Okay, okay, you gotta go faster, like in the movies, like this, watch, watch. Okay, okay, yeah, but like in movies, I've seen them like, get the spark by banging rocks together, not, not, oh. okay, fine, look, I, I got this, okay, watch. That is true. You faintly recall in some survivalist movies that a person would rub two sticks together. With enough speed, it seemed to smolder. At least a little bit. You decide to try this method, increasing and decreasing your speed in a variety of ways in order to experiment. Spawn, your sticks actually begin to smell like they're burning, and you both get very excited. A few more moments of rubbing the sticks, and you notice smoke. Marshy is not too far behind with her own progress, and she makes a surprise noise upon seeing hers come up in smoke. Okay, wait, wait, we, we have to do this over the pile Dan made. Uh, Instead of just keeping your sticks to yourself, you move, you, you both move over towards the kindling that Dan had made for you. You both, you quickly continue your technique, getting incredibly into it. You place one stick on the ground and drill the other on top of it. And while it takes a while, the smoke finally comes back. You can't help but gasp when finally a spark comes from Swan Sticks. Marshy, you immediately stop your own progress and instead of moving towards the ground, and instead, move towards the ground to blow on the spark, attempting to encourage it to ignite. The first few times, it doesn't work, but you bo both don't give up. With one last final blow, the kindling begins to burn. You see the small flame begin to, to burn. Look at that! Dan's voice comes back, and you see him carrying a small batch of logs. He quickly goes to place the wood on the kindling, making a TP formation, and using a stick to help the fire spread. 
Marcy and Swan look at each other, pride swelling in their chest. Marcy, you jump with excitement, turning your body away from the flame. We have mastered the flame! Yeah! Your tail is wagging excitedly, albeit you can feel it moving some of the ground underneath you. You smell smoke in the air, and it catches in your lungs, and you breathe a sigh of relief. Wait, the smell of smoke has changed. You can't help but stop. Marcy! Damn voice pipes up. Yeah, what's up? Your tail! It's the flame. Marshy, you turn your body around a few times, attempting to catch the side of your tail. It takes a few times, but eventually you see it. The flame has managed to catch the tip of your tail. Are you okay? Did it get too much of your tail? Are you going to be my tail scorch. It's so fluffy. It's so fluffy. Yeah, no. It... I think you're I'm... so fluffy. I think you're okay. <laughs> Hold on, like, I we probably... uh... should have. Oh wait. Okay, have really. Have given the fluffy person the sticks to tr do that. Sorry. My For, tail's um, tricolored. Oh Einstein. man. She just. Yeah. She. Why did you have to shake water all over? But, hey. How else am I supposed to get dry? Okay, you could have, you know, you could have, you know, asked us to step back so, you know, I didn't get water splashed all over me. What are you, a dog? I am Robo a fox. dog has better manners than you! <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you guys let things do it. Does tail now need you a bandage? I don't know. Is it, does it need you a bandage? can survive the wild. <laughs> At least a little bit. The wild. Oh. All right, well, <laughs> let's gather the around the campfire and sing our campfire songs. If it helps, your tail doesn't look that badly scorched. That's good. It's only like a little bit scorched. Yeah, um, it's kind of a tip there. Yeah, oh, it's my fine. Tail. But... It's still fluffy. Yeah, no, I think you're fine. <gasps> sea shanties! Oh, that would be fun. <gasps> Whoa! What sort of. Mm. I mean, what sort of sea shanties? I mean, you could sing. Or, did anyone bring like marshmallows or something? Is uh, that something that... Uh, I didn't bring any food with me. I mean, I have uh, some leftover cinnamon toast from the Oasis. Cinnamon toast. <laughs> uh, I think we both <laughs> Stop that. Horror <laughs> stories? I mean, yeah, we can. <gasps> scary like stories. Idea. Maybe scary stories. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, Ooh, I have okay. a scary story here. You've all eventually calmed down after the tail fiasco and sit around the fire. So what now? Sunny asks as she stares at the small fire in the middle of all of you. What do you usually do when you're camping out like this? Marshy perks up with an idea. <gasps> Campfire songs! Uh, okay, maybe not. Um... Swan immediately shoots down the idea. She looks over at Marshy, who has a disappointed look on her face. I'm sorry, on second thought, I'm not much of a singer, and today is not the day I embarrass myself in front of all of you and what? die. Oh. Marshy is about to say something in response when Dan speaks up. I mean, we could tell scary stories. <gasps> scary stories? Sunny says with a hint of nervousness in her voice. Oh, yes! Kitty says excitedly, the volume of their voice causing Sunny to flinch. Kitty continues. Scary stories are super fun! Okay, who wants to start? Taz asks, tilting his head to the side while he pokes the fire with a stick to keep the fire going. I mean, I could start. Who tell us? Kitty says as they're literally on the edge of their seat. Sunny, however, skips closer to Marshy. So, I mean, I did say that it happened here, actually. A while back when I was new to Arrow and I was camping in this spot with Remy and I was murdered by that jackal mass dude who wanted something that belonged to me. Dan bluntly says as everyone looks at him. Well, you asked for a what? You asked for a scary story. Dan says, with a frown on his face. Um, is the jackal person still around? Sunny says, shaking in fear. Uh, totally not, right? Uh, that's the end of my story. Dan says with a shrug, avoiding the question entirely. If you look, you can see Sunny shaking a little bit. Okay. She says, still holding on to Marshy. Marshy gives Sunny a comforting pat. It's okay, Sunny. The scary jackal won't hurt you. Uh, who wants to go next? 
Oh, I want to go! I want to go! Kitty says as they wave their hand in the air. What's your story? Swan is ass looking at them. I heard while we were at sea with Fair that there is a ghost ship that takes stowaways from abandoned ships and bastiers. He says, trying to be scary by waving their fingers in the air and giving a spooky woo at the end of their short story. What happens to the stowaways? Sunny asks. They're never seen again! Kitty continues. Some say they still hear their cries echo on stormy nights. That sounds a little spooky. Um. Kitty snickers. Heroin is a coastal city. They say. I bet if we listen carefully, we can hear them. I'd rather not hear ghost voices. Um. Marsh, she says before Kitty can finish. Kitty simply laughs in response. I mean, Ben is next. I have one. Taz says, somewhat tiredly. Everyone is quiet as they look towards Taz, eagerly awaiting his story. Taz sighs I... and inhales. I heard the story when I traveled here from Gaia to here. <sighs> one day, a young child came to the village. They let the young child, remember I said, poem about a long wind winding river and how it endlessly cuts through the earth. The girl stayed three days. Each day she murmured to herself and each night the air boomed with the echoes of her questions. And soon enough the townspeople began vanishing into the whispers. On the third evening the girl disappeared with the rest. But the echoes remained. Rumors say if you go to the town you can still hear the murmurs of the young child even now. Taz ends his story as he continues to poke the fire to keep it alive. Meanwhile, the rest of you are silent as you process the story. Or, in your case, Marshy, you're trying your best not to completely freak out. Scary stories aren't supposed to be that scary. They're supposed to give you a little spook and that you can laugh off later. No way that story is true, right? That was a good one, Taz, Dan says, breaking the silence. Thanks. Taz says. Um, I think I, I think we're done with scary stories now. <clears throat> that was still a good one. I think that was better uh, yeah. than mine. Uh, totally, yeah, really Definitely good. Better than mine. I mean, mine was an event, but huh? Uh, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just gonna uh, just uh... a little cold sitting by the fire makes me warm. <laughs> Let me know. No, I, I... Uh. That was quite nice. I'll definitely sleep back out here. Oh. Even if, like after everything that happened to Jackal, I think I'd be fine sleeping here. I don't think he would. I mean, maybe. No. Oh, so another campfire. Okay. <clears throat> it's fine. It's fine. Mercy? Are you okay? Mm, I don't like. I don't know if I want to camp anymore, guys. I think I would rather um, go somewhere else. Yes. Um, maybe we could get a hotel room or something. Anyone have money? Not on me. Uh. Okay. Um. I mean, we can. Oh, is this, is this, is this, is this a raccoon? I think. Oh, can... it's a pug. What? We can try to head back, um, and figure out something on the way. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We can head back. <laughs> Mar um, we could head are back. Are you guys okay with me? Okay. Let, okay, let's just put this fire out first, and then we'll we'll get going. I can help. Yeah. Thank you. Work, Marshy. Last time we were here, it uh, Rafi did just say yeah, no. It'll be fine. He locked the door <clears throat> on you. I am sure we can easily convince Rafi to change his mind. Okay. Uh, what are you gonna do? Write uh, him? Oh, I really right, hope door. that we don't go to the end. The I'm, I'm literally banned from the dock end. So what this works. did you do? <laughs>
When coming home to the house, you first attempt to open the door. However, it was locked. So, with a heavy sigh, you find yourself knocking on the wood of the door once more. You and your group stand there in silence, the summer breeze gently ca caressing your skin. Off in the distance, a toad croaks, causing Marshy's fur to stand up on, on end with surprise. <gasps> Swan eases a hand on Marshy's shoulder, as Dan stays towards the back, allowing Kitty to observe Pluto in the moonlight. You're left standing there for a few moments, but before you go, before you go to knock once more, the door finally opens. In front of you, Robbie leans against the doorframe. His eyes appear to be half loaded, indicating that the man had been asleep prior to the knock. However, it appears that he heard you and eventually came to your aid. He glances up and down before his eyes finally settle on Marcy's face. He first gives you a look of annoyance, but upon seeing your expression, it softens. I'm guessing your sleepover didn't turn out well. His voice rasps. Uh, it appears camping wasn't our strong suit. So you decided to come back here? Robbie says, looking at Marshy specifically. I assumed you'd be the type to like camping. He raises a hand to push some of the loose strands away from his eyes. Um, well, the, the woods are a little scarier than I thought. Robbie glances back at you and blinks. His expression softens once again, and Swan glances over to look at Marshy. Marshy's eyes were large and round, and her ears laid flat against her head. She was giving Robbie the biggest puppy dog eyes in the world right now. Don't do that. Robbie quickly argued, his brows <sighs> attempting to furrow. They managed to for a little bit, but as Marshy gets closer to closer to him, as Marshy gets closer, the look on his face quivers. We we supposed to be here. Robbie intakes a sharp breath. Pursing his lips together, he once again tries to froze his eyes and stiffens his a body. He holds his breath for, a for as long as he could, but eventually he lets out a defeated sigh and closes his eyes. His shoulders slump, and his disposition appears to be someone who has surrendered. Marshy, your tail wags ever so slightly upon seeing your friend loosen his body. Ravi shakes his head, his eyes open once again half-lidded. Fine, just don't be too loud and stay downstairs. I want to at least get some sleep tonight. He says. Also, try not to wake the others. <gasps> Thank you, Abby! Give me a hug! <gasps> Ayo! Oh, no. Wait, wait, shh, 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 not too loud, Trying to yell loud. really quietly! Welcome to the hype house! Okay. Wow, you actually have like a, a living room. Yeah, yeah, I sleep on that awesome. couch right there every night. <laughs> this, is, this is bigger than Matt and Remy's house. It's okay, this we have like just... six people here. It's oh, okay, supposed to be big. This downstairs is bigger than my 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 room. <laughs> well, it is a living room. I guess so. Yeah. Anyway, small tour. This is the living room. This is this <laughs> this is the door to the sus alley. Wait, the sus alley. <laughs> Um, the s what? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> um, over here is the kitchen. Don't take the cookies. Robbie will kill us. Oh. <laughs> He's yeah, already but... upset. We don't need to make it worse. And that's upstairs, but we can't go up there. <laughs> do you think if we ask, do you think Catherine will make us cookies? What happens if we do take a cookie? I mean, you could ask me. I know how to bake. I think we oh, yeah, make too much we... noise if we bake. Didn't the others, Not like, true. eat all of your cookies at the competition? Oh, yeah. That's that's typical of Dia. That's so okay. loud! <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Wait, if we have to be quiet, how are we supposed to have like the super fun, big, exciting sleepover that I've heard that this is supposed um, to be? Well, um, I mean, uh, we can still have lots of fun. We don't fun. scream. Uh, I'm a little tired. Let's let's. <sighs> what shall we do? Um, I don't know. I mean, we could play. Hello, oh. Steve. Oh. <laughs> Oh no! He's <laughs> okay. We're doing, we're doing splendid. 
Oh. Well. Sleep Scary stories part two. No. You enter the house, some of you merely collapsing on the nearby couch. Ravi immediately takes a seat when you all enter, decidingly going upstairs to hopefully get a restful night's sleep. All of you were starting to feel the effects of the day wear on you, and then someone speaks. Aren't sleepovers supposed to have games? Kitty asks. Swan, Marshy, and Dan. For some reason, the idea of playing a ton of games causes a little chill to run up your spine. However, you, you subside the feeling, deciding that you still want Kitty to have a good experience. Um, maybe we could do short games. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of getting a little tired. <gasps> what about a short round of Never Have I Ever? So you suggest. Then afterwards, we can just sit and chat for a little bit. Kitty smile, smile curls in on itself. Puckers! <laughs> <laughs> Kitty! Oh, you forgot that you taught them that word. <laughs> You put up ten fingers, and then for each thing you have done, you put a finger down. Whoever puts all their fingers down first loses, which ends the round. Then if someone has more fingers up than the others, they win the game. You all murmur between each other, agreeing to the rules. The game itself seemed like a good form of entertainment, and besides, it didn't cause you to get up. Which, at this point in time, attempting to get off the couch seemed like a chore. Uh, I'll go first, and we can just bounce around the group. Sunny, sunny hums. Uh, let's see. Never have I ever fell from the sky. Marshy, Swan, and Dan, you all can't help but look at each other before putting the finger down. Sunny can't help but giggle. Bruh. This is rigged. <laughs> Wait, you're a bird! Kitty pipes up. How could you not have fallen from the sky? Can't you fly? Sunny goes pale and looks around the group. Uh, uh, moving on. There's a lull before Dan finally speaks up. Never have I ever had braces. The group looks around, Kitty being the most confused in the group. What are braces? They ask, their ears flicking. Swan and Marshy, you smile gently as you realize that maybe braces aren't a thing in heroin. However, Dan, you place a finger down. Wait, Dan. Tess says curiously. Why would you give a prompt that makes you put a finger down? Dan shrugs. Kind of forgot about it, really. Uh, I'll go next. Uh, never have I ever gotten a tattoo. That's a little bit targeted. Dan laughs, placing another finger down. The game continues to go on like this for a few more moments. Never have I ever gotten food poisoning. Never have I ever drank alcohol. All the common things. Some more related to Rem, while others directed at your fellow travelers. Dan's last finger goes down at the last prompt. Never have I ever kissed someone on a first date. Kitty gives him an accusatory look. There's no way you've done most of the things we've said. They tease. Dan reaches his arms up and stretches them above his head. Guess I'm just that cool. Bro. Kitty can't help but make a face before sticking out a tongue. Says the guy you ate dirt and has a flower, son. They murmur under the breath. Dan help, can't help but laugh. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad we did a short game. Sunny yawns into her hand. <sighs> I don't think I could keep my brain awake any longer. Kitty, despite their eyes becoming half loaded, shoots up. Wait! The entire group stops to look at the child. They give you a bright smile before pointing at Dan. Nail polish! I want to paint your nails! Dan blinks with some surprise before shrugging. Go for it. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think we have some black nail polish somewhere. Sunny hums, getting up from her spot. I'll be right back. Now that the game has concluded, you all glance at each other. Dan is, Dan is the first to move, walking his way over to sit beside Kitty. You all begin to all- you all- you all begin to sh also shift. Or is she going to sit on the floor? Swan, you find yourself sitting above her on the couch, touching her hair lightly. Ugh. Okay, kitty. Fine, if you want to get my- paint my nails. Oh. I'll pop a squat right here. There you go. Woo! This is Why fun my and nails? festive. Why my nails? 
Sunny had come back downstairs with a vial of black nail polish, which Kitty eagerly grabs. Dan, you splay your hands out to the other, making sure that the kid had some ample space to work with. Swan and Marshy, after some hushed whispers between each other, you decide that Swan was going to try to rebraid Mar Marshy's hair. Sunny comes to sit beside Marshy on the floor, leaning her body for warmth. She smiles at the scene before letting out a yawn. This is nice. It reminds me of my childhood in Gaia. Gaia? I... Tao said something about Gaia earlier, but what is that? Sunny leans her head up to look up at Dan. She ruffles her feathers for a moment as she thinks. Oh, it's the kingdom from... well, I guess... Marshy is also from there? Uh, yeah, I kind of sort of fell there. <laughs> Dan tilts his head to the side before glancing back over at Kitty. Surprisingly, they aren't making a mess of your hands. They weirdly have quite the technique for this, and you can see them focusing intently on each finger. You're pretty sure that they aren't even listening to your conversation anymore. Focused on- more focused on the task. What was it like? Swan asks before Yang catches on her lips. She had appeared to redo the same strand on Marshy's hair a few times, unsure of how did the how to braid the hair of someone with huge fox ears. But around the third time, she finally got it. It's full of life and magic. Incredibly vibrant with all sorts of plant life surrounding the area. Sunny explains before shifting back. Her hand goes to her mouth and she gives a large yawn. Dan, you watch her with some interest. Uh, lots of plant life? Sunny nods, her eyes falling close as she hums. Mm-hmm, yeah. She slowly leans her head on Marshy's shoulder. Marshy glances down at Sunny to see that the other girl has fallen asleep. Looks like it's time for bed. <laughs> yeah, it has been a long day, hasn't it? Kitty continues to make work of your fingernails, Dan. Being surprisingly fast and detail-oriented, Swan and Marshy simply begin to relish in the warmth of the house. Hmm. <sighs> All right. Good night, everyone. I mean, hmm? you don't want to talk to a little gossip or anything? Well, okay. I'm getting a little tired, but we can talk still. I mean, we can. Um, I mean, you know, I don't actually... know how long I'll be awake for, but. <laughs> well, you're not going to sleep until you finish braiding your oh. hair, okay? Oh, but right. it's making me so eepy. <laughs> Well, then I'm trying to hurry, okay? Like, I'm not- this is good practice for me. You know, I didn't actually- Good job, Kitty. That's a really good job. I didn't actually know how to braid when I when I came here. Hmm. Which is silly. You have you know, a braid I, in your hair. I know. I kind of, like, came that way. <laughs> and then it got really messy after a few days, and then my friend Easton, back in Bastios, literally got so frustrated with me that he sat me down and taught me how to braid my own hair. <laughs> oh, I'm Which is why I can braid. Like, I'm surprised it wasn't like Strahd went. Swan, you need to you need to braid your hair. You need well, to make sure it looks nice <laughs> for whatever position you are in. Well, I didn't know Strahd back when I fell because I was in Bastios. I wasn't here. Yeah, I mean, I guess I didn't. I didn't even know Strahd until like the matchmaker thing. Mm -hmm. Until like we had to interview her. And I didn't know Strahd that. until that. Bake sale. Yeah, you haven't really gotten a chance to talk with him, have you? Not really. He's um, he's quite the character. I'm sure he's very nice. Was in his own way. Kind of. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm. Arguably, I'm a kind of a little bit. <laughs> he kind of like. He when we went to the matchmaker to interview for like stuff. He he was able just to talk to her so eloquently, and I felt like I was I had somehow messed up. But it was him that was like doing whatever, and then eventually she gave so us the information. But whatever. what? How does the matchmaker work? Like, what do they oh. do? She like. Um. Oh yeah! So... Didn't we see them at the bake sale for a little bit? Oh yeah, yeah. I remember they gave. That one person, a really strange. Catherine. Yeah. yeah Catherine. They Catherine said a lot of strange didn't things to seem her. To like that much. <laughs> yeah, no, she's so strange. Um, yeah, no, I walked out 
one day after I got kicked out of the inn for oversleeping, actually. Oh, right. Um, I was starving, and she had a bunch of, like, chocolates out. And somehow that tra she trapped me into a soulmate reading, or a love <laughs> reading, you know? Told me all about, like... This this person that I was supposedly connected to, and it, it was it was it was it was that super sounds interesting. interesting. Yeah, it, I mean, it was also a little. I, I kind of don't. Think it, I've always it's wondered real, if but... I had a soulmate. Does everyone have a soulmate? I mean, I I don't know. Hmm. But wait, I'm how would we even know if it's real though? Because what it, it could just be a scam. Exactly. Hmm. I mean, sh 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 I. She said something about water for me, and it was insane. I. It would still be know. fun to see, even if it's not real. I think we should go check it out. Huh. Are you, you sure? Why not? It'd be fun. And even if it is, like, not real or some crazy, like, cryptic thing, it's just for the funsies. Yeah, okay, fine. I'll show you where the matchmaker is. I guess I wouldn't mind trying it out. I mean... I'm just curious! It'll be fun. But I called dibs on this spot in the couch. <laughs> that's... that's... okay. That's fine. I'm going. Sunny took cross. my spot, actually. I mean, could actually. we, like, all just dog pile on the couch? Or are we just gonna, like... Is anyone here, like, super bony? I Don't chat me. Taz is already clocked out, so that's oh. one person not on the couch. No, I'm not. Oh. I <sighs> thought you'd be no. out by now, because no. you like your sleep. Okay, well... It's... Well. You're right <laughs> next to me. Uh. Well, mm. it's yeah. sleepy time. Good night, everyone. I'm tired. Good night! Good night. <sighs>